Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Once again, this is Pastor Steve venturing himself around the city of Boca Raton and where we find ourselves as a treasured spot, a treasured spot not because of um, the beauty of it, not because of the uh, centralization of it. It is Sanborn Square. Um, it's a treasured spot because a couple years ago uh, we brought the praise team up here. Uh, we were praying, we were singing over our community, um, and that really hasn't stopped for me. Uh, I know that we haven't been out here uh, recently with our praise team, uh, but I have been out here uh, recently, usually in the mornings. Um, it usually was every Tuesday morning um, that uh, uh, I would have this. I would have Bible study. Then I'd be able to kind of take off. Um, like I said a couple years ago as well, um, but uh, made it pretty regularly. Uh, then on um, a Monday morning, where I'd come out here and meet Chief. Uh, Chief, uh, that's what his name was to me. He never really gave me his real name. He was a homeless man. Um, and Chief, I met when we were out here at Sanborn Square, praising God um, and praying over our city. And he said that he, his name was Chief because he was the chief of the HOA, the homeless. Uh, association um, and so uh, chief and I always grabbed right across the street uh, Burger King um, and there was something really valuable valuable to me about meeting with chief and others um, that got the wind that I buy them breakfast um, and within uh, this homeless population uh, a lot of times we assert our stories on them we assert our um, thoughts uh, upon what their life has been uh, that they've done it to themselves that they they've uh, uh, abused a substance and uh, we kind of fill in their own testimonies but it was fascinating to me to be able just to hear and to take in their stories they have stories and testimonies about their life and it just isn't always uh, the story that we think that they ended up uh, within homelessness. Well, we're in John chapter 5 uh, today, and uh, I want to bring that forward because as, as I'm sitting on these steps or as I'm looking at these benches, um, sometimes the beds uh, of these homeless people, uh, we want to pray over them today, uh, but we also want to understand messages. Uh, we want to understand testimonies, and Jesus brings that in, into, a, uh, into light um, in the Gospel of John here in a powerful way. Um, about the testimony about him and what people thought about him and how it doesn't matter what people think about him. It matters what the Father thinks about him. And so uh, that's where we pick up in John chapter 5, um, and it is starting at verse 31. We're going to finish out chapter 5 of the Gospel of John. John 5, verse 31. Let's read together. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not valid. There is another who testifies in my favor, and I know that his testimony about me is valid. You have sent to John and he has testified to the truth. Not that I accept human testimony, but I mention it that you may be saved. John was a lamp that burned and gave light, and you chose for a time to enjoy his light. As it says here uh, uh, that uh, John had a testimony uh, about the truth, and it was about Jesus. He says, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. If you would have heard him and heard that truth, you could have been saved because salvation comes through the Christ. And that is the truth that John was professing. And so with them denying his message, but rather still going to him, he was still a lamp, a light that they were going to see out in the wilderness. What is he doing? That uh, uh, he, they were actually giving over some of their ministry to John to have him baptize people so that they wouldn't actually be doing that at the temple. And so uh, Jesus is pushing towards his testimony was true, ever so small compared to the Father's, but his testimony was still in the right direction of being able to profess the Christ. Verse 36, it says, I have testimony weightier than that of John. For the very work that the Father has given me to finish, and which I am doing, testifies that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You've never heard his voice, nor seen his form, nor, nor does his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the one he sent. So you can say you believe in God, but if you rule out the story and the testimony and the truth that God sent Jesus, then you don't really know God. Then you don't really believe in God because he works in certain ways and he is working through Jesus Christ. He works in a certain way to bring you to faith. That's called the Holy Spirit. Sends the Holy Spirit with the gospel and, and, encaps, and, and enlightens you to that gospel that points us always to Jesus. That's our God. We can't believe in a God uh, just because he's a supreme being. We have to believe in a God that has sent a mission or purpose and that has always been through Christ. And that's what Jesus is saying here as well. He says, 
verse 39, you diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me. All of scripture is about Jesus. When you go through the Old Testament, um, as you're reading the Old Testament, I always say this in my Bible studies, but when you read the Old Testament, always think to yourself, how is this pointing to Christ? What does this look like pointing to Christ? Because all the story of Abraham, the story of Moses, the story of Isaac, the story of Joseph, the story of Joshua, they're all pointing, they're all pre, 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 prefigurations about Jesus and the promise of Jesus to come and seek and save the lost, to come and bring salvation to creation. So as you read those stories, they testify about who Jesus is going to be, the promise of the Messiah. So he says, these scriptures, they, that, they testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. You make up your own stories. You make up your own testimonies. You make up your own thoughts about how salvation comes to you, that you're just going to obey the commands. And those are great to obey the commands, but they are used as a furtherment to be, bring about the forgiveness. The law brings about the gospel. Because if you don't know you're dead in sin, how could you be alive in Christ? See, the law and uh, pushes you towards the salvation that we have in the gospel. Verse 41, I do not accept praise from men, but I, kn but I know you. I know that you do not have the love of God in your hearts. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you'll accept him. You see how shallow this is of being able to say, you take man's testimony about himself greater than God's testimony about the Son. And he's just speaking to these Jews and these Pharisees, these teachers of the law, saying, <clears throat> you're so close, but so far away. You'll listen to man's testimony, but you won't listen to God's. It says this in verse um, 44. How can you believe if you accept praise from one another, yet make no effort to obtain the praise that comes from the only God? But do not think I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, the law, on whom your hopes are set. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. So he's saying, your accuser is the law. If you want to hold to the scriptures and just hold to the law, go ahead. That's going to be your judgment because no one can fulfill the law. Only Jesus, who came to be perfect in the law and, and, and be able to fulfill the law. That's what he's saying. And so if you would have believed Moses, he was actually pushing you towards believing in me. And so his, the fulfillment of the law and the promises of God are in Jesus, not in the scriptures, not in the law as what we get to see it in the scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures, you say. It is in the scriptures because it is Jesus, the word of God, who became flesh, yes. But their belief is only in that written word of the law that they're going to obtain, that they're going to try to strive after. And he says, there's no salvation in that. It only points to me, the Christ. And so as if you believed Moses, you would believe me for he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? How are you going to believe what I say? Because you're making up your own testimony. You're making up your own thoughts about who God is and how he's working. But yet our God is a God who worked by sending, sacrificially sending, his only son, Jesus Christ, to come into this world to fulfill the law, not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law and to fulfill all righteousness before God so that whoever believes in him will have everlasting life. There is one way, there is one truth, there is one life, that is Jesus Christ. You can't gain it through trying to obtain the law. You can't gain it uh, eternal life through being a good person because we are by nature sinful. So we need someone to reach down in the sin-sick pit that we are in and that was Jesus Christ coming into our world, extending a hand of grace to be able to bring us forth. It wasn't Moses, it wasn't Joshua, it wasn't Abraham, it wasn't any of those other testimonies and those stories of men. It was the story of God in Jesus Christ. And so, brothers and sisters, what a joy it is to sit in this spot because so many times we make some prejudice about other people's stories. But I encourage you, step towards people and hear their testimony, hear their stories about what God has done in their life. It's there because God is always the author and perfecter of life. And so while Chief passed away a year and a half ago, uh, it grieves my heart that we don't have that time together. Uh, but the reality towards knowing that it can go from there is it gives me the sense that everyone has a story. Sometimes 
it's a mess. <laughs> but God makes messages out of our mess. But the greatest message of all is that God loved you so much that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ. And what a testimony that is. Can we pray over our testimony of how much God loves us, but also other people's stories to be able to see how God will intervene? Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for taking us from a mess to our message. We thank you for the love that we have in Jesus Christ. We thank you for the forgiveness that we have in him, the transformation, the life of the joy that we get to have in Christ alone. And we know that he doesn't need our testimonies about him because you have validated, you have uh, shown us that he has fulfilled the law, that he has fulfilled all the promises, that everything is a yes in Jesus. Now there is no more condemnation in Jesus Christ for those who believe in him. They'll believe in you, God, because that's your story. You loved us that you sent Jesus. You loved us that you pursued us with the Holy Spirit and you've called us to faith. Help us to walk in that incredible story and testimony of how much God loves us, how much you are a God that is always with us. And help us to see that in others. I pray over our homeless population in Boca Raton uh, that we can extend a hand, that we can uh, use our feet and our resources uh, to be able to hear their stories, but also let them hear the story of a God who loves them, that a God the Father who loves them as dear children, and that he can transform them and give them life and life full of joy as well. So bless them, Lord, protect them, and help us as the church to extend the hand of grace as Jesus did to us. In his most precious name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, blessings to you as you live out the testimony of Jesus this day. He loves you.